Gold 17 percent drop this year is not exactly what our first guest today has been calling for. Peter Schiff of Euro Pacific Capital is one of the world's preeminent gold bugs. It's my pleasure as always to welcome him back to the show. Hey, Peter. Hey. You know, you're talking about uh, investors' uh, demand for gold going down. I would disagree because, you know, I own a gold company, too, Your Pacific Precious Metals, and we've never had more demand from our clients in the history of my company uh, than we have now. I would say that speculators, speculative demand is what went down. Uh, I think a lot of people who came late to the gold rally were speculating in gold. They were simply buying it because the price was rising. They wanted to hop on that train. They used ETF. They used the futures market. So I think the speculators have been flushed from the market in this in this pullback. But the investors, they're still there because okay. all the reasons that they've been buying gold for the past 10 or 12 years, those reasons have never been stronger. And so investor demand continues. We flushed away the speculative demand, but I think the speculators will come back in the next rally. All right. Well, Peter, let's step back for a second because uh, you kind of jumped in there on, on the conversation that we were having, and I, I definitely appreciate your opinion on that. But I want to talk about the gold price that we're looking at right now, 1383.6. That is the price that we're looking at at this point. We've had you on the show multiple times before. You've said that gold is going to skyrocket. You say it's going to be a bumpy ride, and you can't tell us exactly how we're going to get there. But tell me today, Peter, why have you gotten it wrong? I don't think I have gotten it wrong. I just You just said I said it would be a bumpy ride, and it's look, it's been bumpy, but I've been on this ride since gold was under $300 an ounce. So it's not like you know gold is down from that point. It's off its highs. Uh, but I think what's going on right now is you've got a false narrative out there that the U.S. economy is improving. It's not. All the data points have been negative. We had a deluge of negative data came out today. The only evidence of a rebounding economy is the stock market going up or the real market going up. But that's not because the economy is sound. That's because of all the cheap money created by the Fed. That's the same reason that stock and real estate prices were going up in 2006 or 2007. It is a bubble. The economy, meanwhile, is actually getting worse. And all this talk about the Fed getting ready to take away the punch bowl is all talk. They're going to spike it even more. They're going to up the size of QE. Uh, but if, if people are speculating on an early end are getting it wrong. Gold is going through a correction. All bull markets have corrections. It is a buying opportunity. Okay, Peter, I want to transition on to another point uh, and talk about Japan for a moment, because you sort of believe that their easing efforts are going to fail. But today, Japan's first quarter GDP growth, it actually came in at an annualized rate of 3.5 percent. So what do you think the chance is that the Japanese can actually create some real growth here? Well, that, uh, well, that was, I think, the nominal number. So I think if you back out inflation, it was maybe half of that. Okay. Um, but, yeah, I mean, in the very short term, you know, you get a little bit of a boost, just like you shoot yourself, you shoot yourself up with heroin, and it feels good initially. But you got to think about the long-term consequences. This is a disaster for Japan. Japan doesn't need more inflation. That's not what's going to help the economy. In, in fact, stable prices or slightly falling prices, if you're lucky enough to have that, are great for your economy. Because as prices come down, consumers can buy more stuff. You create purchasing power when prices go down. Now that prices are rising in Japan, and they are rising for all sorts of things, that's going to make the average Japanese poor. But the big problem that's going to hit Japan, I think, like a tsunami, is going to be you have all these Japanese citizens that have been sitting on a pile of Japanese government bonds. They need to sell those bonds. They need to get out of Dodge. They need to get rid of their yen and buy something, anything, stocks, gold, foreign stocks, foreign bonds. And when this happens, interest rates are really going to move up in Japan. They're already moving up. Look at those JGBs, but they got a lot higher to go. But right. the Bank of Japan cannot afford to service that debt. And maybe if it wants to liquidate its stockpile of treasuries, it would be able to do it for a while. But if it doesn't want to do that because it wants to keep artificially debasing the yen, you've got a real crisis. So link that back to Japan. gold for me. Excuse me? Link it back to gold for me. Well, that's bullish for gold because the Bank of Japan is going to have to print ever-increasing quantities of yen to try to prop up that bond market, and that is bullish for gold. And, you know, all this cheap money, uh, and you've got other central banks now. Australia just cut rates, uh, despite the fact that the economy doesn't need a rate cut, uh, because they're trying to keep the, yen, the, the Australian dollar from rising against the yen. South Korea is doing the same thing. Look at what they're doing in Scandinavia. Everybody is trying to debase their currency in a currency war to compete with Japan, to compete with the United States. 
All of this is bullish for gold because it means there's no safety in any currency. People well, it's who bullish, want to it's bullish for gold, gold, Peter. It's <laughs> bullish for gold long term. But the problem I, I think I have with what you're saying here is that you have a lot of investors out there who do not have the time horizon that you're kind of talking about here. From a short term perspective, <laughs> they're looking at a couple of things. They are not seeing inflation. They are seeing a stronger dollar. They're not really seeing a need for a safe haven <laughs> trade because they're rotating well, their assets into this market that continues to go up, whether you think it's right or wrong, not and for whatever inflation. reason. In. They're not seeing inflation because they're blind. We don't have a strong dollar. The dollar index is at 83 and a half. That is very low. The dollar just hit a record low uh, today against the Chinese uh, yuan. It's not a strong dollar. And other countries are intervening to prevent the dollar from falling. The, vo the dollar is on life support. That's how weak it is. And I, maybe if you're talking about speculators that have a time horizon of a day or a no, week or a month. No, I'm not talking month. about speculators yeah. that are looking at a day, but I'm looking at sh more short-term oriented investors. Let's talk about a realistic time horizon, like the next year or so. Yeah, but that's still speculators, right? An investor has to have a time horizon well beyond a year. I don't give advice to speculators. Other people can do that. I'm more about the long-term investor. Although I do think that gold will be a lot higher a year from now than it is today. But, you know, my time horizons are longer than that. But I think that if you are truly an investor, then you've got to look at what the world is going to look like in the future, not what it looked like uh, yesterday. You've got to anticipate these changes. And you've got all this negativity. Peter, so Peter let me ask you this. Why is someone like George Soros selling? Do you think that he's not properly anticipating the changes? Look, I don't know what George Soros is doing. For all I know, he might be about to buy back the gold that he sold. You have no idea what people are doing, especially if they're public about what they're doing. Because, you know, if you want to buy something, you want the price to go down. Uh, and so you might want to talk it down in order to buy it. I mean, that's what Goldman Sachs does. So who knows? I know there's a lot of Wall Street heavyweights. Uh, I think Credit Suisse just came out today and said gold's going down to 1000 I don't know why they said that. Maybe they want to buy it. All right, or so let me ask you this. I don't know. Because you do think that the price is going to be higher by the end of the year. Where do you think it'll be by the end of the year? And also, where do you see the floor right now? We were talking about on air technical levels around 1322. What's What's your take? Well, again, I mean, you know, you can look at a, at a chart and try to figure out, you know, where there was, was prior support. Do you think gold can go down to 1250 or 1300 You know, I don't know. Maybe, of course, any, anything could happen. But I think that whenever it bottoms, it's going to turn around very quickly. And what I'm more concerned about is the ceiling, which I don't think exists. I think there's way more upside potential than there is downside risk. The risk is in currencies. The risk is in the dollar. The risk is in the yen. They're printing these currencies like they're going out of style, and they're never going to stop until there's a currency crisis. And people who can see this are preparing for it. It's been building for years. That's why the price of gold went up from below 300 to almost 2,000, and that is not the end of the bull market. You know, the, the 1987 stock market crash uh, wasn't the end of the bull market in stocks. It continued uh, for the 13 years. All right. uh, the, the drop in the gold price was not as big as that crash, uh, but you know it, 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 it's just as meaningless, just as meaningful, because that decline meant nothing, and, and so did this decline. And we had a bigger correction in gold in 2008, and that correction meant nothing because after gold bottomed out in 2008, it tripled. Right. All right, Peter Schiff. We are going to have to leave it there. We'll leave it on that note until next time, of course. Peter Schiff of Euro Pacific Capital and the author, of course, of the Real Crash: America's Coming Bankruptcy. Thank you so much, as always.